So, uh, Gunsmith Cats. All right, so way back at the RIT Anime Club, right? And like one of the first, one of, I don't know if this is the first, but one of the first showings we went to was this anime. This and was before we ran the so RIT the last, Anime Club. That was the last Club. time I saw this, before yesterday. Yep. Uh, and so that was like, what, 20 years ago? Yeah, not, uh, <laughs> this OAV came out in like 96, so I was a freshman in high school. Mm -hmm. So I didn't see it until the year 2000 when we went to RIT. Right. And at, all I remember watching it was there was the girl with guns, the car, the girl with a bunch of grenades, and be, it was just sort of crazy and ridiculous. And watching it in a big group, it was a lot of fun, and people got real excited. Yep, the crowd went crazy. It was only three episodes. Everyone, people were laughing hysterically at certain parts. Yep, it was only three episodes. It's pretty well animated. Like, it had a pretty high production value for, like, the era. Mm -hmm. Like, it looks good. Right. Like, so, a lot of that. much more recently, Dark Horse released all of the manga, Gunsmith Cats and Gunsmith Cats Burst. Uh, and I bought it all and read it all. I don't know if I kept any of it. I may or may not. It may, if, if I do have it, it's on one of my back shelves hiding behind other manga. Yep. <laughs> I never I actually get rid read of the manga. But and you know what? Even though I read absolutely all of it, I remember almost none of it, basically. Yeah. <laughs> it was not memorable in any way. Uh, there's I also remember the OAV more like more of it than I expected. Because what I remembered before we watched it again was in the first episode, she does a cool ricochet thing with a shotgun. Mm -hmm. In the second episode, that Russian Spetsnaz lady fucking murders everybody. Mm -hmm. And she has a gun knife, which is a real thing. Yep. And the third episode is a little spooky, and it, does, and it gets a little dire toward the end, and people die. Yep. Uh, and then... I also remembered she had the Shelby Cobra. Right. So there's this related thing called like Bean Bandit. Riding Bean. Riding Bean, which is a character, Bean Bandit, who is in the manga and is not in this anime, but he has his own spin off anime, which is just a movie called Riding Bean. I have not seen Riding Bean I since watched, I was in high school. I watched the Riding Bean anime VHS from the RIT Anime Club. I took it out of the library and I watched it once and then I returned it. I want to say I rented it from Blockbuster. I don't remember much of it. Pretty sure I got it from Blockbuster Video. Yeah, all of these things were made by a man named Kenichi Sonoda. So we, what you have to know about this guy <laughs> is this is, a guy, a ja this is a Japanese dude, right, who I don't know how significant he is in Japan, right? Because it seems like I mean, he, his Wikipedia article is not long. It seems like he had his day in Japan where he was big and, like, his manga was big enough to be animated, right, into movies and OAVs. Uh, but it seems like he was bigger in America, at least compared to other manga artists. I Which know I think partly because Riding Bean and Gunsmith Cats came out at two like big inflection points for American anime fandom and got, for the time, pretty wide releases. Well, I think it's also, I know he definitely came to conventions here and made appearances yep. and stuff. I don't know how much... I remember seeing people cosplaying as Riley Vincent at early Otakons. Right. But also, this dude, part of maybe he's part of the reason he was coming to America and doing, you know, and stuff like this is because this guy's America fanboy. He loves cars. He loves guns. He loves American cars. Yes, he loves boobs yep. and butts and, and naked ladies, right? And That's the kind of guy he is. And a weird, technically, she's 30 years old nonsense. He's a, he's a problematic right. figure. So if you look at the manga and the anime, like the you know the guns are so perfectly illustrated down to the tiniest detail, modeled after real guns. Yep. The Shelby Cobra is drawn in like ridiculously higher resolution and fidelity. But than unlike Initial D, the, the characters. characters are also drawn well. Right. <laughs> the characters are drawn well, but mu still much less than the car. Yeah. Uh, and it seems like most of the work he's had in the anime industry, other than the things he's worked on that were his original works, were. Basically, character design for other things. He hasn't, you know, done a lot of original stuff. Also, it seems like he hasn't done anything at all in a large number of years. So, I know what and he's up to. And according to Wikipedia, he's working at his family's candy store. Yep. Uh, by adding lemon peels to his family's existing candies uh, and providing his own Bishojo illustrations for the packaging, he's up to his same bullshit. Right, but it's like, the point is, he, you know, it's like, it was a guy who had his, well, his what a moment Wikipedia in the sun... And went away. What a Wikipedia article. His personal life section says, and I quote, Sonoda is a self-confessed gun fanatic owning several replica guns. Right, because he can't have real ones in Japan, right? Yeah. 
But uh, that is a sentence for a Wikipedia article. I think he he's on also like done golf fours yeah. and bubblegum stuff. I don't know if this is true, but I get the f- – because there was also another guy who did this. I forget his name. Uh, but I think he's also done like American comic stuff a little bit, maybe. Anyway. Yeah. But yeah, there are other people who know a lot more about this guy and could probably talk for hours uh, about you know what the deal with him is. But you have to know about this dude to understand this work. Right? Now, one thing I would say is we're going to focus on the OAV because... That's what you, I watched yesterday. Yes, you do not need to know anything about the Gunsmith Cats universe to watch that OAV. Right. If you read the Gunsmith Cats manga, you will get the full story of Gunsmith Cats. Because it was originally just right. the Gunsmith Cat. Who are these people? How did they get together? How did they get in this business? What their deal is? That is less interesting than the OAV. Right. You'll also, in the manga, get some really bad stuff, right? So if you don't know the the girl, Minnie Mae, right? Yeah. She is, in the manga, you will learn that she is actually like a teenager, basically. And in the an- in the anime, in the first episode, there's a very short scene where like she looks at a photo of a dude longingly, and they don't mention that dude again. In the manga, that dude is her boyfriend. He's there. He's way old, and she's a teenager, and it's totally fucked up. Doesn't she like take drugs to keep herself young? Like, I don't. I don't know about that. I don't remember. But the, there's the, weird shit with it her. It is interesting that the boyfriend's name is Ken, and the guy we just talked about, who's the creator, is Kenichi Sonoda. <laughs> Uh, oh my writing, god! Writing, uh, yes, May is tiny and young, appearing for her age, <laughs> having taken growth stunting drugs in an effort to stay attractive to Ken, the aforementioned guy. She can pass for a child of ten or twelve. Don't read the manga. I read it. <laughs> do, do not read the manga. I don't know if I still have it though. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, other than like the creepy facts like that, though, the manga is basically just a lot like these OAVs, only yep. just more of it. But the beauty of the OAV is that. A lot of 90s anime have this dynamic of there's a bunch of characters and you kind of figure out their deal insofar as it matters instantly. And you just have this story with a whole bunch of characters that all play their part. And watching Gunsmith Cats again really reminded me, it's not the best anime, it's got a lot of flaws, but it reminded me of all the things I really liked about these 90s OAVs. Mm. Like, I mean, this OAV, even though it's three episodes... It's actually just a movie. It's not a movie like, you know, top tier movie when you think of like, you know, anime movies. But it is 90 minutes of animation with one contiguous story that just happens to be chopped up into three acts with an opener and a closer between separating the acts. If the you just opener is basically the Cowboy Bebop opener. Or the Cowboy Bebop opener is the Guns with the Cats opener. Dee 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 dee. And jazz music with colors and dee 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 dee. But three anyway, gun, three if chromatic you, guns. If you cut out the openers and closers and pasted all three of these together, it would be a movie. Yep. Like a made-for-TV movie quality level, right? Not like a, you know, movie, cinema movie quality movie. So what is this movie? It is basically, we're in the city of Chicago, and there are these two women who run a gun shop. Yep. They, they're also bounty hunters. Yes, they are bounty hunters. They run a gun shop. The gun shop is perfectly legal and, like, regulated gun stuff. Like, their customers are cops, because that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. But they also have a large collection of extremely illegal firearms to uh, support their bounty hunting. Right, well, also because, you know, she's she's a gun nut because the author is a gun nut. Yeah, the the main character is a hyper-competent gun nut who knows her shit. Also car nut. Yep. Private investigator drives a Shelby Cobra. If you don't know what a Shelby Cobra is, it's a very rare and special car. It's a very American muscle car. Yep. There aren't many of them. Yeah, there's, there's enough. It's, yeah. not, it's not ultra rare. Yeah, but it's pretty rare. I mean, you there's know. A, there's if a you lot got of, money, you can get one. There are a lot of adjacent cars, but the Cobra was a rare one. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, her partner is basically an explosives expert in the same vein as movies like Predator, you have the team, and there's always the one on the team well, who's the like explosives team, it's expert. Well, like Team Fortress. You got gun person and demo man. Yep. She, does, you see, you have gun and demo man. So, like, the running gag will be, there'll be a tense scene, and Riley has a pistol or something and like, gunfights, and Minnie Mae will just fucking blow up the building. She usually uses flashbangs and smoke grenades uh, and is super clumsy with them. And only uses explo- not clumsy, careless. Yes, but the explosives are usually reserved for traps when they're far away from them. Right? Yeah, she's throwing usually flashbangs and smoke. A lot of the jokes, like the throwaway gags, come down to 
Riley's got a gun and she's like looking down a stairway and then Minnie Mae kind of slides up behind her just holding a fistful of grenades. Yep, that's when the, <laughs> that's when the anime club got excited. Yep. And then you get the long distance shot. You see the house like way in the background. You just hear a pa and then smoke comes out the window. Yep. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So the but movie. Yeah, this, these three episodes are, you know, they're not telling you any of the plot of the characters. There's no real character development or anything that happens here. They're assuming that you already read the manga or you don't have to have. Yeah. Right. But they don't bother introducing the characters very much, although you'll get it right away. Yep. It's just a side story. I don't believe this story was in the manga at all. It's like a complete side story. The same sort of like a Cowboy Bebop movie. Right. It's just like a side story doesn't interfere right you could insert it pretty much anywhere into the into the main plot you know it's like he is a bad guy he is the story of them you know dealing with the bad guy the atf agent the cops you know the russian the whole situation right and then resolving it over the course of you know 90 minutes then the end back to status quo and it has a pretty good progression like the three acts work pretty well like act 1 is basically the somewhat silly plot where they get roped into some hijinks and the cops sort of extort them into helping the cops with this dangerous investigation. Yep. And it's mostly funny. And then well, Act could, 2 is like, oh, there's something bigger going on. This Russian, like, former Spetsnaz right, person. Right, they thought they took care of it in Episode 1, but no, Episode 2, actually, this is a much bigger deal and you don't want to be involved, but now you sort of are being forced to and a big shootout thing happens. Yep, it's a big shootout and a little bit of a, I'm too old for this shit. Yep. And then act three is, no, this is dire and people are going to die. Right, that crazy Russian person who you shot at and is upset and is now coming after you and also the big boss has been revealed. Yep. The end, episode three. And uh, it holds up pretty well. Like, if you're an anime fan... It's worth watching. It's just on YouTube. Like, you could just go watch it right now. Well, it's, on YouTube, e- it's on YouTube illegally. Yeah. But yeah, uh, the things you know that are positive about it, if you really like illustrations of guns and, and cars, yep. but you know, there's also... Parts of the gunfighting? There are also lots of scenes where there are just excuses for characters to have a lot less clothes on than otherwise. But what's funny, and it, like Dave Riley said this a bunch of times in the past, but... It's almost wholesome compared to what that kind of fan service is in the modern era. That's true. Also, some of the scenes, right? For example, it's like these two girls living together in a house, right? So for them to be like sitting in the kitchen table wearing only their underwear talking is like, I feel like normal. That's like, like that's, that's how I live my life. Right. It's like that seems normal and they're just illustrating it. You know, they're just having to be, have you know, uh, stereotypically sexy bodies or whatever, yep. wearing sexy underwear. But, but like every but the epi- scene that's most egregious is in episode two where the bad guy attacks by using the warehouse crane hook. Yep, yep, it, I was going to bring that up. And it happens, a, a giant hook is being, is swinging at this woman. Right? And it the just main rips her bra. And it just so, ha- just so happens to tear her shirt open right down the middle and tear her bra open right down the middle. 90s anime, ladies and gentlemen. And Try like, the And it's a giant hook. It's not like some, you know, it's like, really? It's not like a sword slash cutting the yep. shirt open. But the other, like the, the good positive aspect and neat thing about it is that it's set in Chicago and they did their research. It is like... Well, because he's... And, you know, this guy is a fanboy of guns, cars, America, boobs, well, crime. He's like, yeah, Chicago. So the anime was adapted by uh, Takeshi Mori, who, according to this article, uh, didn't know anything about guns at all, nope. but knew a lot about cars. Mm. So they actually took some of the production crew to go to Chicago to scout locations, to get backgrounds, to do research. They actually visited gun shops, and they went to a police academy and got firearms training. Mm-hmm. And then they used that to make the anime. Trying hard. Yep, and they actually went so far as to get a Shelby Cobra GT500 and record the sound effects for the anime. Oh, so they didn't they didn't buy the car. They just found yeah. someone who let them listen to it. Yeah, and they got the sound effects and made it legit. I was gonna say, and it's funny because half the like the gunplay is very noir. Like goons just fall over instantly dead. You don't see a lot of blood mm-hmm. or any blood, but then a few moments are much more realistic about the guns. Like it's a weird thing to point out, but ricochets are hyper realistic for some reason Mm -hmm. but the noir stuff is just john wick style a hundred russians die Mm -hmm. the gunfights are really fun though like they're more interesting than most of the noir gunfights i would say after episode four of noir Mm. 
But yeah, if you want a nostalgia trip back to 90s anime, if you don't mind some of the negative parts of 90s anime. If you want to see, like, in a, a really tight example of what popular 90s anime was like, this is, like, this is the shortest path to experiencing that. Mm. And uh, if you can you... also learn about this Kenichi Sonoda guy who was important slash infamous yep. in a time and a place in this really narrow it's like a really big fish in this tiny pond for a period of time. Yep. You know, uh, I guess will be remembered by some anime nerds and then, you know, feels like we'll be forgotten <laughs> at some point. Every now and then, some nerds like us will do a, a panel at a random anime convention talking about, so, you ever heard of this guy? Mm. Let's talk about this guy none of you have heard of. Yep. Uh, but I now kind of have this itch I need to scratch. I kind of want to watch, like, Bubblegum Crisis again. But he did like, character design for that, right? Yeah. yeah. But, like, that 90s anime, like, I'm starting to feel it again. Bubblegum Crisis, I think, is much better than this. Yeah, but Bubblegum Crisis is also not great. No, I just think it's better than this. Yep. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's great. <laughs> the only real important part about Bubblegum Crisis is that the 80 police suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logo.